So we explained the concept of uh, data decomposition. Um, but no matter how you decompose data, um, you have to run the algorithm or implement the algorithm and run it on hardware. Um, there are hardware and software approaches uh, to realize this parallelism. Uh, early days of the process of design try to take advantage of the instruction level parallelism um, in, in so-called the superscalar or out-of-order hardware designs. Multiple instructions, uh, if they are not dependent on each other, they are issued and executed uh, in parallel within one single processor. Um, and these are done uh, transparent to the compilers, uh, transparent uh, to the users. Um, and they uh, have shown promising improvements over the baseline designs. Uh, but we're not talking about these level, uh, instruction level parallelism in our class. Um, on the other hand, um, also in the early days, uh, even now, people have been using uh, software threads uh, to achieve high level of parallelism. But these designs are not done automatically. Uh, you have to be experienced in uh, designing these software applications using pthread libraries, for example, and to tell the hardware where the parallelism it exists. And often in the, you know, in implementation uh, in, in different environment may support different uh, programming frameworks. Um, some, for example, support threads and, and shared memory model, uh, where in other situations, uh, people use message, message passing, uh, which does not require shared memory, uh, but it does require you de define explicitly uh, what kind of messages you want to uh, pass around from one thread to another thread uh, to um, transfer data, uh, to handle control, uh, etc. If we look uh, closer to the hardware, um, there are different kinds of hardware um, in the market. They can be used for different uh, parallel computing tasks. For example, um, multi-core superscalar processors, um, for example, Intel's processors, multi-core uh, CPUs, uh, they are designed for these task parallelism. They can run fairly complex uh, tasks on these individual cores um, at the same time. The other kinds of processors uh, or designs uh, are so-called vector or SMD, CMD uh, processors. Um, they are uh, designed to take advantage of some of the data parallelisms. Uh, for example, in uh, x86 uh, CPUs, they have SSE units, which can you know, perform very long vector operations um, and so that you can uh, perform these um, operations in parallel. Also, uh, people have been using multi-core SIMD processors. Uh, and GPUs are representative uh, processors in this category. And they are, you know, best for data parallelism tasks because they can, you know, perform these on these hundreds or even thousands of cores, and each core can still perform CMD on multiple data. So you have a large number of hardware computing units that are working at the same time and on different data at the same time. Um, just, you know, I want to point out that even though for this particular s lecture and maybe in the next two lectures, we talk a lot about GPUs, but some of the con concepts um, are um, like applicable to uh, FPGAs. Uh, but underneath the FPGA, at the implementation level, they do things differently. Uh, they use logics, uh, and they can be programmed in different ways based on your uh, application.
Um, but the concepts are very similar. You can think about you have you know, multiple cores, and each core you have um, you know, SIMD, which can perform operations on different data at the same time. Um, so there are a lot of computation, a uh, lot of parallel resources uh, that perform different kinds of operations at the same time. Uh, we're going to talk about this loop strip mining. Um, uh, it's a very popular technique used to split um, data parallel tasks between independent processors. And every instruction must be data parallel to take full advantage of this SMD architecture. Next week, we'll talk more about the GPU's SMD architecture. Uh, but just right now, you can think about, you know, from the hardware perspective, with, with GPU or FPGA, you can have cores. So you have a big chunk of resource, multiple cores. And each core, it can run SMD, so single instruction, multiple data. So one single instruction can operate on multiple data at the same time. We need a single core. And you can have multiple cores. Loop strip mining is a loop transformation technique uh, that can help partition the iterations of loops. Uh, this can utilize the uh, vector or SMI, uh, SMD units uh, to execute these iterations at the same time. It can split between different processing units, uh, for example, multi-core CPUs uh, or um, um, uh, on GPUs as well. So, but for GPUs, think about you know, multiple cores, and within each core, you have uh, multiple uh, data that uh, can be carried out. Um, the operation can be carried out on multiple data at the same time. Um, another concept is SPMD. SPMD uh, refers to a single program, multiple data. Uh, as, uh, as PMD executes multiple instances of the same program independently, uh, where each program works on different portion of data. Um, and for scientific and engineering applications, um, a very good technique is to, is to combine SPMD with loop strip mining uh, so that you can, um, you know, break these multiple iterations into different portions and um, to carry out the instructions within the each, each, each iteration on a single processor. If you run SVMD on uh, a distributed cluster, you typically use message passing. Um, but for GPU, uh, because the uh, program memory is shared among these uh, hardware threads, uh, so you don't have to do uh, message passing. Let's consider this example. Uh, we're performing this vector addition. We have two vectors, uh, A and B, and we want to add them uh, to, uh, and the result goes to a new, pro new vector called C. And the size of these vectors are uh, 12. So we have 12 integers or floating point um, in each of these vectors. Of course, for a serial program, you would go through the whole um, array of numbers uh, one by one. So you go from element 0 up to 11, 11. And to use SPMD with loop strip mining, uh, what we can do is to have this program, this for loop, um, replicate three times. And we have three um, programs here, but each programs, uh, each program runs on different part of data. So the first program, uh, the iteration you can see is from um, index zero to three, and the second program is for index from four to seven, and the last one uh, goes from index eight through eleven. So we have three programs. Um, and they run, uh, of course, hopefully on different processors, and more importantly, 
because the way the uh, the index is used, so they are going to work on different part of data, original um, vector. So in this example, each chunk of data could be executed as independent thread. And uh, if you use really the software thread, um, and because um, GP, uh, CPUs, the cost of creating threads is high. Uh, so the computation you expect to uh, be done on each of the processor should be bigger. So it's the, you know, what we call the arithmetic uh, density. So for each part of the program, if you uh, want to do this, you expect that program, um, the operations to be uh, more complex, fairly complex. And that can uh, overweigh the overhead of creating that single thread. For GPU uh, and also for FPGA, the overhead of creating these threads is very low. Uh, so we can create um, even you know, one program for one iteration. So you don't have to go through the um, iterations index from zero to three. You can even have one thread or one unit to carry out the operations for index zero and the other one carry out for a different one. So, so in, in other words, you can have large number of these uh, SPMD execution instances because the overhead of creating these instances is very low. So put the uh, example into these three um, implementation solutions. We can have a single threaded CPU uh, version where you go through uh, all the 12, um, in this case, uh, N elements. Um, so T0 stands for the threat zero. Um, and, and if you look at this time going uh, from left to right, so it takes a much long, uh, very long time. For multi-threaded CPU, of course you can create uh, multiple threads. Uh, depends on the number of processors. Let's say if you have four um, processors or four cores, you can create four threads and then these threads will be able to run uh, independently in parallel and they work on different portions of these loop iteration. For GPU, uh, because the overhead of, of creating these threads is very low, you can really take advantage of these large number of uh, hardware um, cores to run as many as you want. Uh, of course, uh, limited only by the number of cores on this GPU and then to carry out these operations. Um, you can have one thread um, just you know, perform the operation on one loop iteration. As we mentioned earlier that uh, single instruction multiple data is at the final granularity. Uh, th these processors can execute uh, one single instruction uh, with different data at the same time. Uh, internally, one, the single instruction is issued to be executed simultaneously on many ALU units. ALU stands for arithmetic logic unit. I'm pretty sure you know that. Uh, the, we call the number of ALU units is the width of the SMD unit. SMD processors are different for uh, data parallel algorithms. Uh, they, oh, sorry, are sorry, efficient. They uh, can reduce the amount of control flow and um, other uh, uh, hardware uh, in favor of these um, ALU units. Because you don't need to do these complex instruction level parallelisms checking to look ahead to see whether, you know, instruction zero uh, is there any dependency with instruction 11 or, or 100 to move instruction around. Here, we emphasize that one single instruction is applied or uh, executed on many um, ALU units at the same time. In this example, uh, we have a, um, a SMD um, hardware unit. We have some sort of control memory stores instructions. And these instructions, uh, each of them can be issued 
and uh, two multiple this, these are processing element. So we use term kind of it's not a nice way. Um, it's a little bit messy. Sometimes we call um, computing unit. Sometimes we call processing unit. Uh, but these are the concept to uh, describe the hardware resources within the chip you can uh, use for computation. So they can take uh, the data inputs and then perform the operation at the same time. So in the vector addition example, if we have this four-way SMD unit, uh, we can execute four iterations of the loop at the same time. Because you know, for that particular example, the program in each operation is very simple, just an addition, right? So you can literally use one of these four processing elements to perform the ad addition operation. All current GPUs are based on SIMD hardware architecture. And the GPU hardware implicitly map each SPMD thread into SMD core. Um, so the programmer does not need to consider the SMD hardware for the correctness, uh, uh, rather just for the performance. Um, this model is also sometimes called uh, single instruction multiple threads. But you know we're not going to talk about threads um, uh, later. We we'll just you know won't emphasize uh, the um, the data part. Just one point uh, that I will add regarding the atomic operations. Atomic operations are useful uh, for synchronization purposes. And um, but you know the cost of having these operations are different on CPUs and GPUs. On CPUs, because the um, I would say the granularity of these parallelisms are um, relatively low compared to those on the GPUs, and um, people tend to use CPUs for task parallelism. Uh, rather than intensive data parallelism operations. You can have a very long program um, designed and executed on multiple uh, CPU cores. And among these tasks, you may need to use atomic operations to allow data to be read and written to without intervention from another thread. Uh, and that's very useful. But the uh, things are different on GPUs. GPUs, uh, also um, similarly on P FPGAs, they, even though they support some system-wide uh, atomic operations, but we need to be very cautious when we use them. Uh, the reason being that these atomic operations have very large performance uh, uh, overhead. Usually, that if you use global synchronization, uh, if you have to use them and very frequently, um, these operations, these tasks are not suited uh, for the GPU, because GPU are best for doing this, you know, very dense arithmetic operations um, and very large amount of data at the same time. If you require constant, frequent synchronization um, using these atomic um, operations, that's bad for the, the, the GPU. Any problem that is decomposed using input data partitioning will likely need to be restructured uh, to um, execute well on a GPU. And we'll talk more about that when we look at examples. <coughs> 